Hello, my brothers and sisters. Lovers of the truth that are out there. <clears throat> First and foremost, give an honor to our Heavenly Father, the Almighty. He who was, he who is, and he who is to come. He that exists, and that's our Heavenly Father. There's no one like him. He's above all of the mighty ones. All the gods that are out here, and that's our Heavenly Father, Yahuwah. And also give an honor to his only begotten Son, who he has elected by his right hand. And as the prophecies speak of regarding him, that the messenger came down to tell him, as far as the parents of him, his earthly parents, and that is the Messiah, he who will save his people from their sins. And that man's name is Yahushua, the Almighty, the one who came through the virgin birth. We're speaking of that man. And my brothers and sisters, even though all of you who may be going through trials and tribulations, as we all are, those of you who are lovers of the truth, and continue to persevere, to keep your trust in them. And if there is any offenses, doubts, repent to our Heavenly Father and our King and get back on track with them. As I've been granted permission by Heavenly Father, and his Messiah to speak by their authority, their power and wisdom and guidance is regarding their teaching the Beatitudes and the Similitudes. The Beatitudes and the Similitudes. For those of you who have your scriptures, please <clears throat> turn me to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 5. And we, of course, we know the, um, the word Beatitudes, it does come to us from the Latin language as it is expressed uh, as Beati in the Latin Vulgate. But it basically is, please guide my father, my king, is expressing the benefits, the blessings, and how those who are, as they are obedient to our Messiah and his Heavenly Father, they will reap the benefits they will be, they will receive the joy, the happiness, you understand? So, <clears throat> let's go to Matthew chapter 5, please. And commencing at verse number 1. It says, And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying. Now, let's hold on for a moment, my brothers and sisters. <clears throat> so, as we can see, not with our own mind, but with the mind of our Heavenly Father and our King, as we see our Messiah, Yahushua, as he's coming forth, and his disciples are all around him, those who are gathered to hear him. We have to remember that our king is the Messiah. He is the one, as it was prophesied in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 18, whom Masha, our ancestors, spoke would come. So Yahushua, he is the prophet. He is the anointed one that has the, not only did he come in the name of our Heavenly Father in his authority, but he also came with the very words of the Creator. You understand? So listen as our father guides his son in what to speak to us. <clears throat> Verse 3, it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You know, it's a lot of you all out there who are going through a lot of trials and tribulations. And we are going to focus on the Beatitudes and the similitudes of those things that our King expressed. Notice again, listen carefully. He says, blessed are or happy are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, for all of you, if you have a, some of you have the dividers or the strings in your Bibles, 
put that right in between because we're going to be coming back and forth to Matthew in uh, chapter 5. Now, for those of you, please turn with me to Luke, the fourth chapter. Now, mind you now what he said through our Heavenly Father. Bless are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Let's please go to Luke, the fourth chapter. Thank you, my Father, my King, for what you're doing. And let's start at the 14th verse. It says, And Yahushua returned in the power of the Spirit unto Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught there, excuse me, and he taught in their synagogues or their assemblies, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on a Sabbath day and stood up for to read. So here's our Messiah. He's been he's he's filled with the mind of our Heavenly Father. Our Father's mind governing our Messiah to go and to speak with the people as his custom was, to go to assemble with them. Listen, my brothers and sisters. Verse 17. And there was delivered unto him the book or the scroll of the prophet. Yahshi Yahu, it says Isaiah. And when he had opened the book or the scroll, he found the place where it was written. Verse 18 it says, The Spirit of the Master Yahu is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To preach deliverance to the captives and recover of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. To preach the acceptable year of the master Yahuwah. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened upon him. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is not this Yahusif's son? That's powerful. So look at how, as we're looking at the similitude of the beatitude that we were just led to read previously, we see the, the mission of the Messiah. We see that when he came, as he was led by our father and our king, thank you, Master, and my father, as he was led to go there and speak with the people, the, the people's condition, they were in a, a, a low state. Not just a low state of, of their, uh, please guide my mouth, my father, my king. Not, with, not were they only a poor people, an oppressed people. They were also oppress spiritually. They needed spiritual guidance. You understand, my brothers and sisters? This is what the Messiah came to do as far as, as far as his ministry is concerned. Now, let's go to the book of Mark. Let's go back to Mark. Mark chapter 12, please. Mark chapter 12 and starting at verse 41 it says here and Yahushua was set over against the treasury and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury and many that were rich cast in much and there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a farthing. 
And he called unto him his disciples and said unto them, Verily or truly, I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. That's powerful. Look at the state of this woman. Even though she was poor, as our master was watching her, she expressed that love for the kingdom, for the cause of the ministry of Yahushua. A poor woman now. Everyone else were giving, they, they had much. But this woman, she had little. And Yahushua would through the power of our Heavenly Father, acknowledge that. Do you understand? See, a lot of us today, we are only going to be consistent in times of abundance. But can we be consistent even when we're in state of lack? Do we really love our Father and our King that much? Can it still be consistent? That's powerful, my brothers and sisters. You understand? Now, let's go to, let's go to Matthew, the 26th chapter. Mind you now, our king said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 26. And let's start at verse... Six. It says, now when Yahushua was in Bethany, in the house of Simon, the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster, alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he said it meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation saying, to what purpose is this waste? Now, let's stop for a moment. Now, thank you, my father, my king. The apostles during that time, it wasn't evil what they said. Or as far as how they questioned it. They didn't understand it, the significance of it. Not as of yet. But notice how this woman took something of great value. And that value was going to be projected upon a more higher value, which is our king himself. Listen, my brothers and sisters. Please. Verse 8 again. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. So we know, thank you, my father, my king. So we know that their intention wasn't wicked. They wasn't trying to take the, out the ointment and to sell it to provide the financial, you know, the financial aspect of it on themselves. They weren't trying to do that. They were thinking about the poor. But listen, verse 10. When Yahushua understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble you the woman? For she have worked, it says wrought, it's an archaic term, it says, for she have worked a good work upon me. For you have the poor always with you. But me, you have not always. That's powerful. Because, you know, that's something what our king was led to say by the inspiration of his father. Because even today, we still have the poor around us. Those of you, look in your local areas. I'm not talking about those who are pretending to be poor or using it as a means of a hustle or, or gain. I'm speaking about people as I find I can't believe me. There's people who are really in need in all of your local areas out there. So what our king said thousands of years ago, look at how it's still in operation today. But he noticed how he is letting them see the difference. It's not that our king didn't care about the poor, but he's getting the apostles' attention to let them focus 
on his importance and what the woman was really doing. Now get my father, my king. Verse 11 again, he says, For you have the poor always with you, but me you have not always. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily or truly I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel or this good news shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this, that this woman have done, be told for a memorial of her. That's powerful. You see, we as his children are not to lift this woman up to where we worship her. No, that's not what our king is speaking about. What he's speaking about is the very action of what she did, the intention of what she was doing. She cared about him. His importance. You understand, my brothers and sisters? We are to value our Messiah above all of our value, our valuables. Over all our possessions, we are to value him and his heavenly father. Do you understand, my brothers and sisters? And that intention of what that woman did is to be remembered. That we are to put him in a high value. Thank you, my father, my king. Now, let's go to our ancestor Shaul. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, please. 1 Corinthians. This is still a similar to pertaining to the Beatitude, what our master was speaking. 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. Starting at verse 1, let's listen to what our ancestors said, the apostle, the sent one. He says, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, or messengers, and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not Charity, it profit me nothing. That's powerful. Without our, the love of our Heavenly Father, which comes from above, which is the epitome of the kingdom of heaven, His true love, if that's not in us, we're nothing. See, this, is, this relates to those who, as our King said, blessed are the poor in spirit. Because, see, we need to have a higher spirit. Thank you, my Father, my King. We must have the mind of our Heavenly Father. We need His spirit, Him, is, him and His Son. We need their spirit. Without their spirit, how can you know their love? How can you know their kingdom? Do you understand, my brothers and sisters? Let's go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, the 6th chapter. And starting at verse 1. He says, We then as workers together with him beseech you also that you receive not the grace of the Almighty in vain. For he said, I have heard you in a time accepted. And in a day of salvation have I secured you. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. But in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of the Almighty. In much patience and afflictions. In necessities, in distress, in stripes, 
in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness. It says by the Holy Ghost is speaking of our Father's mind, by the set apart spirit, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth, by the power of the Almighty, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor. By evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not kill, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. What a powerful revelation that our ancestor in the ancient days received from our master Yahushua. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You see, our ancestors, they went through a lot. They suffered. You understand? But the kingdom was theirs. The kingdom was inside of them. You understand, my brothers and sisters? Let's go to Jacob, as it says, James, the apostle. Let's go to him and see the things that he learned from our Messiah and our Heavenly Father. Let's go to Jacob, as it says, James, the epistle of James. Let's go to chapter 2 and starting at verse number 1, please. Listen to what the apostle says. He says, my brother, my brothers, have not the faith of our master Yahushua, the anointed one, the master of glory or splendor, with respect of persons. See, he's, he's not, thank you, my father, my king. Thank you so much, my father, my king. He's not telling them to not have faith of the Messiah. Let's read it carefully. My brothers, have not the faith of our master Yahushua, the anointed one, the master of glory, with respect of persons. See, we're not supposed to have his faith in a corrupt way. In a pure way, not a corrupt way. Listen to what he says. Verse 2. For if there come unto you, excuse me, for if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring and goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man, and vile raiment. And you have respect to him that wear the gay clothing or the expensive clothing and say unto him, sit you here in a good place and say to the poor, stand you there or sit here under my footstool. Are you not then partial in yourselves and are become judges of evil thoughts? What a powerful, powerful question. And for those of you who can remember, even when we were gathered in the, the local churches out here, you would see how people, all of you can relate. You all can relate. You can see how you would come. And even not just necessarily in what we call church today, but even in just normal functions. You'll see how people who are based upon what they have or how they look on the outside, they're treated in a more respectable manner than someone who may not have that much. So what the apostle is telling our ancestors during that time, and even as his words are coming to us today by inspiration of our father, our king, is that we have to be very careful in how we display the faith of our Messiah, Yahushua, and that we cannot be partial with it, do you understand? Listen, my brothers and sisters. Verse 5, he says, hearken or listen. My beloved brothers, have not the Almighty chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he have promised to them that love him? What did our master say? He said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So he's reminding all of us 
We're looking at similitudes and expressions of what our master expressed. Do you understand? That the kingdom is of importance. And those of us who may be poor in spirit, we should rejoice because if we follow what our Messiah said, through our Heavenly Father, the kingdom belongs to us. Listen, my brothers and sisters. Verse 6. He says, but you have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? Do not they blaspheme the worthy name by the which you are called? If you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You do well. You see what he was teaching them? He was teaching them how to have love for those who were oppressed. Those who were poor in spirit. He's echoing what our Messiah was speaking as he was speaking on the divine inspiration and information of our Heavenly Father. You see how it's still being taught? Listen, my brothers and sisters. He says here, but if you have respect to persons, you commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. He understands. Listen, my brothers and sisters. Verse 11. For he that says do not commit adultery said also do not kill. Now, if you commit no adultery, yet if you kill, you are become a transgressor of the law, of the commandment, the instructions of our Heavenly Father through His Son. Do you understand? Because His Son is the Word. Do you understand, my brothers and sisters? Verse 12. So speak you, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Listen, for he shall have judgment without mercy that have showed no mercy and mercy rejoice against judgment. What do it profit, my brothers, though a man say he have faith that have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food and one of you say unto them, depart in peace. Be ye warm and feel, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body. What do it profit? That's powerful. See, our ancestors, it was, it was, you have to understand now. The words of our king are spirit in our life. But he also supplied the people. As our father and our king expressed to him through the apostles to feed the needs of the people. He was not partial. The word of our father was expressed through the mouth of our king. But he also, as when he saw them in poor states, he also did what he had to do to meet those needs. And so the, the apostles did the same thing. And this is what Jacob is commanding and speaking to the assembly to do towards each other. Listen, my brothers and sisters. Listen. Verse 17. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yes, a man may say, you have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. That's powerful. And as you're led, you can read on down as it speaks of the examples of our ancestors. But notice how the parable that our king spoke when he spoke the Beatitudes, it still, do you see the similitudes, how it's still applying? That those who were in need, they will receive the kingdom. Let's go to our ancestor, Kaffa, as the scholars call him, Peter. Let's go to 1 Peter. 
the fourth chapter. Please. Kapha, 1 Peter, 4th chapter, and starting at verse 6. Let's listen to what our ancestor, because remember now, he also walked with the Messiah. Listen. Verse 6, chapter 4, 1 Peter, chapter 4, verse 6, says, For, for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead. That they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to the Almighty in the spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Be you therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things have fervent charity among yourselves. For charity shall cover the multitudes of sin. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man have received the gift, even so minister the same one to another. As good stewards of the manifold grace of the Almighty. That's powerful. You see, they were to... Thank you, thank you my Father King. See, what Kafa is saying, mind you now, he was there. During a time when Yahushua was speaking, what we know as the Beatitudes. And as he was receiving, please guide my father, my king. As, he's re, as he was receiving the inspiration. Now, even though the, him and all the other apostles went through their struggles, they got to a point where they began to be per, in a perfect, perfected state to where they were now being able to project that same. Ministry, that same inspiration to those who need to come up to perfection. Those who were, in, who were poor in spirit. Do you see this? Thank you, my father, my king. Let's go to our ancestor, Yehuganon, 1 John. Let's, let's look at the apostle here. 